Hiya, how's it going? Um, this is episode 29 of the Apology 2 podcast. How's it going? Hope you're doing well. If it sounds like I'm trying to keep my voice down, um, I am. I'm sat in an Airbnb and there are other people here and it's 11 o'clock at night, so don't want to be disturbing too many people. If you're watching on YouTube, which isn't likely because fucking no one watches this podcast on YouTube, but if you are and you're seeing the fact that I'm extremely red, that's basically to do with me climbing a mountain today and I didn't put any sun cream on or wear a hat and I got burned, particularly my nose and my neck, uh, which is class. That was the good fun. I was going to, I did plan to record the podcast on the mountain at the top or was halfway down or whatever. I thought it would be some pretty cool, spectacular views, but there were just too many people around. So uh, I couldn't do it. What a shame. Uh, It would have been nice to do an outdoor podcast uh, out on a mountain with a bunch of sheep, but it didn't work out. So I'm doing it here in this Airbnb where I have to be slightly quiet. So you might have seen the title for this podcast, Make Prisons Gay Again. I'll go into the title in a minute because the title's a bit misleading for this this the topic of this week, but I'll just give you a bit of a background as to why I'm doing a podcast on prisons. I was listening to I had an eleven hour coach the other day and I was listening to uh the soundtrack of the seventies or something like that you know, like a 70s playlist on Spotify and the Bob Dylan song Hurricane came on. Very good song. It's basically about a guy who was framed or was wrong, no, a guy who was wrongly convicted of shooting a bunch of people in a bar in the 1960s and, and essentially the reason why he was wrongly convicted is because he was black. We don't really need to go into it. My personal opinion is that he actually did it, but the song sort of says that he, he, he didn't do it and that the trial was biased towards him because he was black, which obviously does fucking happen a lot. You know, people are serious cunts, aren't they? So, look, we'll get straight into it. And I, the, reason, the reason why I wanted to do a podcast on prison is because I, I thought about him and I thought, well, imagine being wrongly convicted because of a mistrial or because you didn't do it or whatever and having to sit in prison for fucking 20 odd years and prisons are fucking miserable like it's not a nice place to be and I thought that's just really fucking hard luck isn't it so I thought like we'll, we'll focus on some ways to improve prisons like obviously they've got to do, fulfill their purpose of a keeping bad guys off good streets uh, b reforming those bad guys so that they are then good guys and see I, 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 there is a see that's, that's that's what prisons are for only two things that prisons are for reforming people and keeping them away from oh and just punishment I guess see as punishment yeah so you've got to do all those three things but I think it could be done better particularly in terms of the reforming and I think a softer approach to prisons would probably make them more effective across the board but obviously you've still got to be pretty nasty from time to time with certain people, if you are in a prison. Look, we want to title. The title is Make Prisons Gay Again. Look, I just think it's catchy, catchy title. You know, it it, it sounds right, yeah, because it's like Donald Trump, isn't it? Make America Great Again. It's like a catchy phrase. Uh, It's topical. Make prisons gay again. But just want to address a few things. So part of what I'm going to be talking about is like, the dematchification of prisons. So, like, make them less macho, more feminine, like more sort of camp. And actually, you know, femininity and gayness are, are different. You can be feminine without being gay, obviously. So I do appreciate that that's, why, that's part of the reason why it's a bad title. I also appreciate that make prisons gay again suggest that prisons previously were gay and obviously they weren't you know and that's like 
comments about rape aside, then obviously there probably some prison rapes which were pretty gay, but I don't really want to go too far into those because it's not really the tone of the podcast. And uh, you know, not, not all the ideas are about this whole femininity thing. So look, it's just a catchy title. There's plenty of reasons why it's a bit shit, but that's the one I've gone with. So, uh, you know, fucking write to your MP or something if it's a problem. Uh, also, this podcast is poorly researched. Some of these ideas might have been implemented already and I don't know about it. You know, if you listen to this podcast and you're expecting it to be really thorough and well-researched, then honestly, who the fuck are you? You know, you, you clearly haven't been listening before. Speaking of which, if you are new listeners, there's a, there's a few. Fucking listen to the rest of it. Like, it really annoys me when I have like, new listeners and you listen to one episode and go, like, yeah, I'm, okay, I'll start listening from now on. It's like, well, okay, if you can listen from now on, fucking listen to the rest of it. There's loads of good, fucking solid, original content for you to get your teeth into. There's like fucking 15 hours of it. So, you know, go back and listen to it, you pricks. <laughs> okay, so it's like six minutes without actually getting to the point. There's a lot of points to make. This could be a long one. So I will fucking dive into it immediately. So the first idea is something which actually has been done before because I heard about it one time on the internet, so it must be true, um, is make prisoners wear pink or alternatively make prisons pink. First of all, you know, a lot of prisons, I think in America mostly, I don't know about the rest of the world, prisoners wear orange jumpsuits, don't they? That's a thing. They wear orange jumpsuits, so they, they look like weirdos in their big... Or I don't know why they have to be orange, but they are often orange, aren't they? Like orange is the new black. That's like a thing, isn't it? Because they all wear orange in prison. Right? Yeah, not wrong. Uh, orange is a fucking horrid colour. Like, there's nothing nice about orange. And yellow. Yellow's fucking shit as well. The two least favourite colours. Pink is such a better colour than orange. Side point, side little tangent. My gran also agrees that orange is a shit colour. And she believes that it affects people's mental health if they're around too much orange. So she wrote to the British supermarket chain Sainsbury's and told them this and told them that orange was a shit colour and that they should change their colour to a different one. They should change their entire branding. And they replied and said something along the lines of, yeah, look, we appreciate your interest, but we have a lot of customers who know our orange brand. And... We're like the second most profitable company in the UK, so uh, go fuck yourself, basically, is what they said, <laughs> which is fair enough. Some crazy old bent writing in to say, you know, fucking stop using orange on your logo it is a little bit weird, but I do agree with her. Orange is a fucking shit colour. There is a particular type of pink called Baker Miller pink. It's, I assume, designed by some people called baker and miller or someone whose last name was double barreled baker miller i don't know um and he's come up with a with a color a pink color which it allegedly does something to your brain and makes you less angry or m makes you a better person i don't really know how it works i don't even know if it's true but baker miller pink is a thing and it, apparently it's supposed to lower your heart rate and as a result, it decreases your strength as well. So it stops you from, obviously, lower heart rate, decreases the amount of blood pumping to your brain. When you get angry, you get all blood in your brain. You, that's why your head gets, like, hot and you get all red in the face when you're angry because there's all blood pumping towards your brain. That's, and it, and it stops that, apparently. don't know how. How does a fucking colour stop you getting, like, red face? I don't know. But it does. And that can happen in as little as 15 minutes. So in some prisons, I think it's in Switzerland, they have pink rooms, which are painted Baker Miller pink, that they'd stick you in if you're being a, a knobhead to, to calm you down. And literally a quarter of an hour later, you're pretty pretty chilled out. So as a result, I think that we should make things pink. And, you know, it, again, it makes things less macho, less confrontational, and pink's, you know, quite a feminine colour, so it stops these men having these toxic, like, testosterone-driven anger fits, uh, which obviously is related to a lot of crime. Speaking of which, pink, cool colour pink. I don't know if this is true, but I'm saying it anyway, that pink used to be like a boy colour. So it, it 
used to be for boys and now it's for girls and that was made the case by Hitler and the Nazis they decided that pink was a girl's colour and that blue was for boys and it spread across the world I don't know if that's true um, but if it is true and the Nazis created pink and that's now going to help prisons then maybe the Nazis could have helped, you know, have helped me a little bit in my ideas you know at least they got something right um, weird let's move on uh, and it, even if it doesn't work like in terms of the, like changing people's mindsets it's fucking embarrassing to be put in a big pink room or to be made to, made to wear a pink jumpsuit isn't it so you know from a, like a hard line right wing punish them point of view punish people by making them sit in a fucking pink room and looking like a dickhead that might be a deterrent you know for doing crimes because you know it's got a fucking weird pink prison which you know obviously would delight all the boomers out there you know to fucking humiliating people that that's that's what they want to humiliate criminals isn't it so plenty of arguments for creating pink prisons uh look okay we'll move on so part of my whole thing is it's a, the whole strategy about this is to turn prisons into something which have like a net positive impact so prisons make life better for everybody they contribute actively to society rather than just taking bad things away which is a lot of what we use prison for is literally like this person is bad we don't want him here can we have him over there for a bit so we can get on with our lives without him being here because he's a dick that's essentially what a lot of prisons are but i want them to be you know modern prisons which contribute to society god i'm such a fucking millennial but oh well oh well anyway part of this kill two birds with one stone turn prisons into wind farms put wind farms on top of prisons with the turbines or all around prisons or the gut the fucking watch towers they could have wind turbines on top of them you're thinking why is that a good idea i'll tell you what's a good idea because people fucking countryside seaside cunts um they often complain about the unsightliness of wind turbines they say oh it ruins my view they don't look very nice do they well fair enough they don't look very nice but neither do prisons prisons look fucking shit as well so if you put wind turbines on prisons then you only have to have one unsightly sight isn't that fucking smart and you're then using that you're then repurposing that land as well or you know, creating a dual purpose for that land to help everybody you know who doesn't fucking love wind energy wind energy is so cool it's the fucking coolest thing ever like the wind blows something turns around and you can switch the tv on how fucking badass is that uh, extremely that's the answer uh where, where was i where was it what to talk about oh yeah wind farms so obviously there's more wind by the coast that's that's a fact i think i think that is a scientific fact there's more wind by the coast so put prisons by the coast put wind farms on the prisons then you know you're fucking getting all sorts of power out of them and good thing about having prisons by the coast is that the water blocks off like an escape route like alcatraz sort of but only there's land on one side so you only need like guard towers and watchtowers on one side because if they escape the other way they're just going to end up in water you know and you're just going to die in water so you know fucking that's saved a lot of budget for a lot of guards on one side very very good idea and for good behavior good behavior in prisons you get out you get let out on day release go and get an ice cream at the beach what a fucking lovely day that would be for good behavior it would encourage good behavior in prisons which is something we all want less expenditure on guards as a result less likely that the guards going to get hurt less likely the other inmates going to get hurt more chance of people being reformed or because they get ice cream in the beach fucking amazing uh this one must have been done 
next one on my list is, is give prisons voluntary work. If they want to do some work, let them do it. Be it laundry or cooking or, I don't know, IT. <laughs> uh, you know, give them give them a chance, you know, a sense of purpose. A lot of people who go to prison have committed crimes because they have no real sense of purpose in life. Give them a sense of purpose and it will help. So that's a fucking serious, nice, good, serious point for this not so serious podcast so we'll go on to a less serious point give them pot plants it would be good for them to have nurtured something if you're nurturing something like a pot plant like a spider plant which by the way i sell so i'll sell them some make myself some money profit motive if you give prisoners pot plants and they will look after them and it will show how much fun looking after stuff is and then once they get out of prison they're more likely to look after stuff rather than stab it up the only problem is is that it might encourage them to grow drugs but you know who cares about drugs anymore basically legal now isn't it so you know let's do that get a pot plant in every single cell get them looking after pot plants not a ceramic pot though you could seriously fucking cave someone's head in with that so just a nice little you know plastic one and not one that not one that like cracks you know like a squidgy plastic one you know you don't want to be able to sh make a shank out of it or anything <laughs> okay that's weird uh and part of the whole pot plant thing so let them grow their own veg if they want if they want to grow their own veg they can and then that veg is then sent to the kitchen at the prison and is then turned into food for the prisoners. Right? It's like a nice relationship, a nice codependent relationship that the prisoners have on each other. Then they make their own food. It goes to the prison kitchen and gets cooked for them. They're eating fresh, nutritious food, which is good for everybody. You look much less likely to commit a crime if you've had your five a day. Probably a fact. I don't know. Just made it up. And, you know, it gives them a sense of, you know, belonging and being and sort of purpose in life is to create vegetables give them job opportunities when they get out as a gardener well you probably don't want your gardener as someone who's committed a murder but you never know you never know and you know it gives them a chance when they get out to support themselves if they can't get a job they can at least grow their own veg and eat and eat well obviously they can't prepare the veg you know you get a sharp knife to chop up a carrot you could end up hacking someone's bits with that so but they could grow and eat their own veg, which would mean it's sustainable. The prison is more sustainable and it stops corporates from making profit off the food. So what you often get, particularly in America, a little bit in the UK, I think, I don't know about other countries, is private like canteen companies, like the ones who serve you stuff at school, like Sodexo and stuff like that. The, the, the people who serve you that fucking horrible slop you have to eat at school they also do prisons so they also do prison food and they're making fucking huge money off providing basically fucking horrible slop to prisoners and children who are basically prisoners aren't they basically treated like prisoners at school but you know that's a podcast for another time um yeah so they're making huge amounts of money let's cut them off let the prisoners make their own food a nice relationship there. You stop fucking corporates making money off prisons and you make nicer food for them. So it's a win fucking win. Uh, speaking of profit in prisons, private prisons fucking bin them off. They are dumb and stupid and mental and just all of the worst things. A private prison, a prison created for profit motive. These things actually exist. Like, I'm not lying about that. It's an actual thing. People out there make their money. Like, directors, CEOs make their money off owning prisons. It's a little bit in the UK. There's a few who do that. I think they run by security companies. And there's loads in America. I think almost all of the prisons, unless it's a federal penitentiary, are run by... Are run by like corporates so it's in their best interests to sort of understaff them you know, which puts a lot of 
strain on them and it makes it put it's in their best interest to get people into prison because then they get more money from from the state because obviously when there's profit there is deficit which is okay in a lot of things like if you're selling lemonade and you're making profit and the deficit is in the hand of the you know they pay a little bit more for the lemonade than it costs to make then fucking fair enough but if it's prisons or any sort of public service you you can't have people paying extra for it you can't have it lining the pockets of someone because that that money that money which is used for the profit could have been used for better conditions in the prison or you know more focus on reforming people or whatever it might be you can't make profits of prisons bin off private companies in relation to that um you know that's an easy one an easy one you know nationalized prisons are, it's crazy that they aren't nationalized as it is you know that's not a fucking radical idea uh next one is uh to stop locking people up because of discrimination you know basically i've mentioned this in the podcast before you're much more likely to go to prison if you're particularly in the west you're much more likely to go to prison if you're black or if you're a man it doesn't matter what crime you commit being black and a man or black or a man makes your the likelihood that you're going to go to prison for whatever crime greater i think women are more likely to get sympathy from a jury i guess and also potentially they're more likely to use the defense of like oh i have a child i can't go to prison you got what's going to happen to my child or i'm going to have a child or it's going to break my family apart or whatever and basically they get away with crimes that you know they get suspended sentences that they get they don't go to prison so if you just stopped locking people up through discrimination, I'm not saying that more white people should go to prison or that more women should go to prison. I'm saying that fewer men and black people should go to prison. That's that's the argument. And basically by having fewer people in prison who shouldn't be there, you then can sort of focus on reforming the right people or you can focus on getting the right people off the streets rather than trying to reform people who don't need it because they didn't actually commit a crime. They were just falsely accused because they're black. That makes a lot of sense. This is a fucking serious podcast, isn't it? I didn't want to be that serious. I thought it was going to be quite a jovial one when I was doing it. But yeah, actually, maybe I have a point to make. Who knows? Uh, oh, yeah, okay. So stop locking people up for petty crimes and drugs. And I don't mean like drugs in serious drug dealing. There's a big problem with drug trafficking. It creates a lot of other issues. But basically, just legalize it. That would solve an awful lot of issues a lot of supply issues you know the supplier would then be government controlled if you legalized it would take out all the big players of drugs you can't be but you can't be in any circumstance just jailing drug users they don't need to be there they they put pressure on the prison system they make prisons worse you know fucking barry from milton Keynes, who stuffs a bit of white stuff up his nose on a friday night or you know Patricia, who smokes a plant which she grew in her garden, does not deserve to go to prison. So stop locking those people up. There's people, and there's people like who have been locked up, particularly in America, because of the three strikes rule. So they've committed serious crimes before and not gone to prison. But it's like three strikes and you're out, and then you go to prison for fucking ages. So, like, there's people who have like stolen a brownie. I think I heard that on QI. Someone stole a brownie from a shop and went to prison for like 17 years because you get the maximum penalty for whatever the crime is. I don't know. Fucking mental. Stop locking people up for no reason or for shit reasons. It doesn't make any sense. And there's too many people in prison as it is, uh, which, you know, is, is another good, serious point, which, you know, this is not usual for this podcast. Anyway, we'll move on. Uh, Introduce self-care courses for people in prison. They're less likely to reoffend if they know if, how to cook and clean and, you know, if they're better educated. Makes sense. No-brainer. Again, a bit too serious, so I'll move on to the next one, which is less serious. Which is decorate prisons nicely. You know, put some wallpaper up. Carpet them. Maybe don't carpet them. Be shit everyone there. Put some wallpaper up. Nice pictures on the wall. Secured on the wall, obviously. Uh, I don't know. Other things that made things nice, I don't really... Put some light fixtures in. 
nice lamps. All I'm saying is that if you decorate prisons nicely, people are less likely to commit more crimes. It, it, it links into something called the broken windows theory, which is something that the New York police used. New York used to be like a fucking hub for awful crime. And then what they did is they repaired all the broken windows and put extra street lights up. Basically, the theory is, is if the window is already broken, like in a building, then someone's more likely to break another window. It, it, if you see a window that's, that's broken in a building, you care less about breaking another window. So if you decorate things nicely and make sure there's no signs of crime, or if you if you make things posh so people feel like that if they did cause damage that it, it it would be bad or it would you know cause trouble, then people are much less likely to commit crime. This is a fact; it's been proven in, in, in police tactics. So if you decorate prisons nicely, get people into the the rhythm of not wanting to damage people's property, then, you know, you've solved a lot of crime problems. Uh, next thing on the list is uh, separate the genuine bad guys. There's some people who are proper actual cunts, like proper actual cunts out there. You know, people have done some really serious crimes. I won't, I won't even name the crimes because, you know, this is a family podcast. I don't want to, like, trigger anybody, but... Put fucking those guys away from the guys who, you know, some guy who might have committed an assault because he's misunderstood. You know, the people who haven't, who have done stuff wrong and deserve to be there, but people who sort of can be saved and can be reformed, separate them. You don't want the really bad guys dragging the not so bad guys down because that's what they'll do. Um, Yeah, fucking take them away this right last i think that's the last serious point so we'll get on to some of the less serious points uh which is change the <laughs> starts with change the meaning of prison lingo to embarrassing things and then write it on the walls so by prison lingo i don't know any prison lingo i don't even know what i'm gonna do well um shanks like like a shank um change the meaning of the word shank to i don't know pulling off a dog <laughs> or whatever like I'm going to shank you means I'm going to pull off a dog in front of you if you just change the meaning and write that on the wall shank means that you're going to pull off a dog then people will stop saying it and every single time that that the, the prison lingo changes learn it and fucking write that on the wall as well take the bad vocab out of prison people are more likely to reform fucking class idea uh, 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 um Oh, yeah, like target the big mean guy. There's a thing in prison, isn't there? Where people are, you're supposed to go and hit the biggest guy on day one because, you know, you everyone respects you afterwards because you've hit the big guy. So I have like a little reverse on that is if you, if the prisoners are, or the, the prison itself targets the big guy or the, or the ringleaders or, or, or the gang leaders, with like the good behavior projects, the projects to try and make people well behaved, then that they will then influence everybody else into being well behaved. Doesn't that work? Yes, it does. Thanks very much. Well done, Alfie. Because there's so many of these which are going to be successful, so many of these ideas which would change the way prisons work, that then basically what you should do after all these have been implemented, is create like a prison success story. Good idea. So what you do every month, every week, whatever it is, you send around a leaflet or do a presentation to all the prisoners and show all the people who have been reformed, all the people who were doing well outside of prison because of what's happened to them in prison. Those people, those prisoners are then more likely to buy in to these make prison gay again ideas. Isn't that good? Isn't that good? Yes, that's so good. So good. All these people will be looking at it in prison thinking, fucking hell, I could be a success story outside of prison. What a fantastic idea. Um, this one has been done. The next idea has been done. Because I know it's been done. I think it's done amongst juveniles, juvenile criminals, and it worked. So before you start having a go at me, this one actually fucking works. So leave me alone. 
uh, make the prisoners take up really placid activities like gardening or reading or fishing. Fishing is the one I'm talking about. I think the, 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 the project was called Hooked on Fishing, I think. And it was for young kids. They got them into fishing and basically if people would go fishing, they're less likely to commit offences. The reason being is that fishing is really boring and placid and it just turns you into a calmer person because you just have to fucking get over the fact that you're going to sit there for 10 hours and not catch any fish. And like no one's ever done a murder after catching a carp and reading The Hobbit, have they? Like that's not like no murderers do that. So placid activities for all the prisoners. Great idea. This has been way too serious. I, like I don't know what to do. I think maybe should, am I going to re-record it with like and learn about the more wacky out there ideas? Probably not. Um, so sorry for this episode being very morbid, uh, but we will finish on a, on a light-hearted, slightly dark joke, which I know doesn't sound right, but it is a thing. Like, hopefully, it will make you chuckle, but it is a quite dark joke. That's that, that's that's the takeaway, uh, and that is that the final way to improve prisons, to make them less violent and m- get the internal rates of crime down stop using fucking bars of soap use shower gel modernize you know, how many fucking people have to drop a bar of soap and then get bummed in prison for them to realize that shower gel's the thing you just fucking squeeze it in your hand and it's not slippery or if you're going to be really fucking weird about it if you say no we can't have shower gel for whatever reason non-slip gloves a nice pair of non-slip gloves would go a long way to improving prisons that's all I got for you on prisons. Pretty weird episode, pretty serious. I'll try and come up with something a bit more wacky next week. Uh, I've actually got a few ideas. In the meantime, uh, my big call to action, as always, is to fucking tell somebody about the podcast and like actually do it. Like, Don't listen to this and then not do it. Just one other person. If everybody from who listens to this podcast told one other person... There would be more listeners, wouldn't there? So that, that, that's and that's always good. So please do that, and then also follow the podcast and social media as usual. Uh, if other than that, I will see you next week. And thank you very much for listening. It's been a pleasure as always, and thank you. Bye.